your password and create your account. So this will take you through into the networking platform. Now, hopefully this will be familiar to some of you, um, but it's very simple to use. Uh, when you log into the platform for the first time, uh, we give you a bit of a helping hand in constructing your profile. You have the opportunity at the start to connect with LinkedIn. Uh, and all that does really is it allows you to take uh, the profile image that you've got on LinkedIn and then pull that into your profile. Uh, it doesn't post back to LinkedIn, uh, but it's a really handy option just because obviously you don't always have a photo to hand on your laptop. And we find that those profiles are better built out. So those that have photos, descriptions, and um, some more information about them tend to see a higher level of engagement on the platform. So they get more accepted meetings uh, and come away with better results from the event. Um, so I've already done so. Um, so I won't show you the connecting with LinkedIn process, but it's very simple. It will just take you out to LinkedIn. and You simply authorize it basically using your photo and that is all. So then I'll hit next and we get through into what we call the onboarding questions. So here I have the opportunity to complete my profile in, in more detail. Uh, and there's sort of eight or nine fields you can fill out. Um, really important that you do fill out these fields uh, for a number of reasons. Firstly, um, the time zone one is particularly important. Obviously we have a, a worldwide event here and you don't want to receive meetings at, at times that are completely inconvenient to you. So handy to be able to indicate um, using that sort of GMT indicator here, whereabouts in the world you are and what time will probably um, suit you for any meetings. So to simply add one of the options, I hit plus and update. You can see there it's taken effect. There's also plenty of options to talk about in terms of your company type, uh, the role that you occupy, your area of expertise. And you also have the option to start copying in your LinkedIn profile URL link here. The other reason it's really important to sort of go through these onboarding questions properly and add in details into these fields is because we start to use some of them um, when the networking capacity opens to prompt our AI to make the best choices very early doors. So obviously the AI works in two ways. It takes uh, the information you provide at the start. So um, the company type you're interested in and obviously the company type uh, that you are and begins to match people up. And then also as you start to interact on the platform, then it takes that information and makes better recommendations. But this is the information that we use primarily at the start. So really important that you do fill this out. So when I've kind of completed more information, I'll hit next and there's a short data consent. Uh, to complete here. You can read more information about that in the terms and conditions section. And then I hit start networking. So logging onto the platform itself, very simple. What you need to do is take that email, registration ID, follow the link, create an account, and complete a couple of onboarding questions. And you're into the sort of the main body of the Advanced Therapies Connect networking space. So one of the things I'd do first is I would check out your profile and just make sure that everything looks okay. So here in the top right, there's a profile tab and it takes me straight to the edit profile section. So I can see here that the image that I pulled earlier on from LinkedIn has, has loaded nicely here. And I can also see that it's brought my, uh, my name, surname and a headline uh, we've created for me earlier. I can also input job title, company and all of the other different fields that I was referring to earlier. You can also write a summary here. Really important that you do complete this, uh, just obviously full profiles, as I said before, will get better engagement on the, on, the, on the platform. I can also see how my profile looks by hitting view profile under edit profile here, and I get a little preview here. So obviously the only one I filled in is GMT, and as you can see, my profile doesn't look great. So I would definitely recommend going back into profile and, and adding more details. The other thing I can do within the sort of individual edit profile page is I can head to manage my availability. So this is a really handy functionality, uh, specifically geared towards when the networking activates. Um, and what you can do here is you can set yourself as busy or available for various times. So people can um, book meetings with you at the times that are convenient for you. And also when you go to book meetings later on, uh, the times that you're suggesting as being available are the only times that will be um, on the drop down list of times. So really handy functionality and I would definitely recommend doing so. So it's as simple as clicking, you know, you can either mark a whole day as available or you can block out various times. And always important to hit save when you're done uh, with this capacity here. Bit of housekeeping stuff here, you can change your email or your password and manage your notifications. Um, and useful to note later on that you can also get a CSV for all the accepting meetings you're having at the event. So the first thing I do, having sort of completed those onboarding questions is just go onto your profile page and make sure that everything checks out uh, across kind of all the different fields that you have available to you. And next, uh, I'd recommend going to your company profile. Uh, this is the reason you're being let into the, the platform earlier than the rest of the visitors and users uh, for the event. So 
I head up here to Teams. And I get brought into a slightly different interface. So this is the, the sort of Teams functionality, this, this area here. Um, I'm going to ignore these first four options here for the moment, just so I can show you these four or five down here, which are probably more important for you guys at the moment. So if I hit team members, I see a list of all the people who are part of the, the team at the event. So for me, it's just uh, myself and uh, one of my colleagues, Sol. So what I can do here, because I'm the admin, is there's a little cog next to all the names uh, in this team uh, members list. If I hit the cog, I have a couple of options. Firstly, I can go and edit their profile. So here I can go into Sol's profile and realize she hasn't got a photo. She's not filled out any of her information and I can update that accordingly. So when the networking capacity opens later on uh, next week, um, her profile is ready to go. She has to do very minimal work. So it's a very handy function as part of Teams. Um, I can also give her the capacity to, to become an admin and have the same thing. And in the same way that I could manage my availability, I can also go and manage her availability, uh, which is all very handy. Next, I can go into the company profile. So here I have Grip's company profile. And the same way that I could edit my company profile, I can edit the Grip company profile that all the other users in the platform will see. So I can add a company type, for instance, uh, hit update. And when I'm done, I can hit save. And most of these are very simple, very, very easy to use. They have either the, the drop down options or the sort of the little buttons we've been seeing before, or you can add a link. So here we have Facebook, LinkedIn, a company link, company Twitter, uh, a documents URL, a white paper URL, an article link, directory link. So those are, you can simply input URLs, no problem. There's one which behaves ever so slightly differently, and that's a video URL, which is embedded on your profile. So rather than just adding a standard URL, you'll have to add a YouTube uh, embed or a sort of an embed URL. So you can normally do it with either YouTube or Vimeo. Uh, for YouTube, I can show you exactly how to do this and how it will look on the front end of the platform. So here I've got the uh, sort of group event networking experience um, video from, from, from Grip. If I hit share and hit embed, I get given a bit of code. The only bit I need is HTTPS uh, and to the end of the um, inverted commas. I can just hit copy and uh, control C here, come back into the platform, click on the video URL and just paste that part in there and hit add. If you hit update and then I can save it. So all that's done is it's embedded a video URL into the platform. There's a little guide within that, um, within that field there just to give you a bit of a tip on how to do it if you get stuck, um, but quite simple to use. So having amended some of these um, different fields, I obviously will want to check what the, the, the GRIP product, uh, the GRIP profile page looks like. So in the top bar here, I just type in GRIP. And it takes me to the GRIP sponsor profile. If I click here, there's a little drop down and on the logo. So you can bring up a summary or any other information that's been put in. But if I also click on the name, I can be taken through to sort of full profile page. You can see very nicely the, uh, the video that I just had a look at. I managed to get the embed code and embed it onto a profile page. So you can quite quickly build a very slick looking profile page uh, for your sponsor or for your, uh, for your company. I can also see here a list of the representatives that are stored at the bottom. Don't worry, at the moment, that'll just be uh, for your page. You won't see the representatives from other companies, but it's just good to know how that will look when the platform goes fully live next week. So to head back into Teams, the only other thing I'm gonna to want to mention with regards to your company profile is the product section. So here I have the option to go down and add products, which will be attached to my uh, sponsor page. Uh, so in the same way, exactly the same format as before, I can add a name, a headline, um, website, video URL, um, and I can make these uh, products look very nice for anyone who comes on to my sponsor page. I won't bore you with, with sort of typing in text here, but I can show you some examples of what the facilitate team have put together. So here, I've gone back to the main part of the, uh, the, the network platform by hitting the logo on the top left, which I can also reach by hitting home. I can go to product list, uh, and someone's already adding one. Um, I can see here the facilitate directory. So I've got a, a product here, some website, a summary, and I can see which company it's attached to. 
Um, so I found that in the product list there. Really handy functionality just to sort of give people a better idea of, of what you're bringing, what you want to talk about at the event. There's also a number of filters here in the product list. Um, and obviously the more information you fill out, you'll appear in these company name and location um, filters up at the top. So handy to know where you'll find these product, filter, uh, product lists and also where to add them. Uh, you can also just double check. Um, you can find your, your own company by clicking on the attending sponsors list and, and find your, your sponsor that way. Um, so that, just to recap very briefly, is, is sort of uh, how you log into the platform using the email that you were given earlier. Where you should first go in terms of logging into your profile and amending uh, the various fields in there just to make sure that you give a sort of true representation of yourself making sure you manage your availability for when the platform goes live and networking next week. And then importantly for you guys today, going into the team section, making sure your team members profiles also match up. You've amended your company profile and you've added any products. Um, so that's what you, you've kind of got prime access to at the moment. Um, I will potentially, Joe, have you got any sort of questions at the moment about anything I've been saying before we move on to the next part? No, I think we're, we're looking relatively quiet at the moment. I'm just going to go back to, to Barbara shortly, but I think you can, you can keep going, Callum. Thanks. Perfect. No worries. Um, okay. All right. So this is the, uh, this is the sort of the, the advanced therapies connect networking space. Um, but I'm going to show you some more of the uh, networking and content and session type um, activity that you can you can do on the grip platform um, obviously as I said at the moment the platform's live for exhibitors to sort of sorry sponsors to to amend their profiles accordingly uh, but you'll get more access to, to different features next week so to do that I'm going to show you using our sort of grip virtual platform so it looks like different and you know some of the names you see might be slightly different but the basic functionality is exactly the same so this is the, the GRIP virtual platform. Um, obviously you can see it looks slightly different, um, but there are some things I wanna to highlight to you. Well, per firstly, I think it's really important to pay attention to this, this list here of the sort of five navigation items. So we've got recommended for you, interested in you, my connections, my interested list, and my skip list. So these are the sort of the networking aspects of, of the platform. As I mentioned earlier, the information that you input when you complete the onboarding, uh, will be used to sort of generate recommendations to you for people that you might want to meet at the event. So if I hit recommended for you, our AI will generate a list of 10 recommendations in terms of people that, that they think I, should, I might want to meet. I have a couple of options for uh, interacting with people on this list. So I have uh, skip, show interest or request meeting. Very simple. Once I work my way through this list in terms of showing interest or skipping, I can get more recommendations um, or a hard refresh, it'll do exactly the same thing. Um, I've been on the platform for a while and I've kind of got through uh, most of the people who've filled out their, their profile in a, in a fuller way. Um, but if I click here, you'll notice it moves up so slightly and ordinarily you get a lot more information about the people below. So let's say uh, with Tom here, um, I think I might want to meet him, um, but I haven't quite got time set up for requesting a meeting and I just want to start making that um, sort of softer impression of, of interest and can simply hit show interest here. He moves out of my um, recommended for you list and he'll move into my interested list here. Um, similarly, if I also see a profile that I, I think actually I, I'm probably not particularly interested in meeting and you, I can hit skip. Um, skipping a profile is not something that causes a notification so don't worry about it. Um, you can take them out of the skip list at any time and as it mentions on this tooltip, Profiles that you skip are uh, skipped anonymously, so um, so don't worry about that. The other thing to note as well is that um, interested actions are just as important as skipped actions, really, because um, it uses both positive and negative information to sort of make better recommendations uh, for in terms of who who you're suggested to meet with. So, so don't worry about showing sort of both showing interest and skipping on profiles. Both very important things to do. Um, on the left hand side here, I also have a list of um, people who are interested in me. And you'll notice that I have not just the option to show interest, request a meeting, and skip, but I also have the option to chat with this user because he has shown interest in me. So um, 
you've got to have a, a mutual interest in order to chat because we don't want people to be able to just spam each other on the platform. So that's why you may not see that on all profiles straight away. Um, also on this profile you'll see here, there's a little star saying preference match. And that's essentially because we've been sort of noted that um, our, what I supply is what he, you know, what he wants or vice versa. Um, so we get a little preference match and, and that's a sort of indicator of why uh, the, the AI thinks that you should meet. Um, so a really handy uh, place to sort of see who's interested in you. If I hit show interest, because she's interested in me, it will form a connection. Uh, so I'm just going to hit show interest here. I get a little indication that says handshake, and I have a couple more options. Um, so I can either view his profile or request a meeting. He um, will, should also appear in my connections and may just be my internet being a bit slow. Um, as I said, there's a, always a list of the, my interested list and my skip list, which are here. So this is the sort of the main function um, or the main body of the sort of the networking side of things. So how do you then turn those connections into, into meetings or how do you sort of turn those recommendations into meetings? Very simple to do. Um, all I need to do is find a user. So in this instance, I will just pick Joe because he's on the call. Um, so I can search from the top bar up here and find his profile. Um, I can sort of do exactly the same thing though um, by clicking on uh, any given person's profile and saying uh, request a meeting here or, or by clicking on their name, it'll do exactly the same thing. Um, so in fact, actually I might go with Ricardo instead. So I hit request a meeting and it'll take me through to Ricardo's profile. I, I get the same view of his profile on the left-hand side here as I did before, uh, but I also, um, I also get more information about his uh about about ricardo and, and setting up a meeting um so i have uh ricardo here i can pick a day um this is because i've been doing some testing in german so don't worry it shouldn't go up in german it'll just be english for you guys um so I pick a time here and pick a location and i can send a message so i can say hi ricardo would be great to meet as you saw there, um, message, uh, uh, meeting requests that are sent with a message uh, have a higher acceptance rate, so it would 100% um, recommend doing so. So I say, hi, Ricardo, it would be great to meet. I hit send. That meeting request is sent straight away. And I can now see here a sort of preview of the, uh, of the uh, meeting request that's been sent. So I can see that he still hasn't replied. Um, and I also have the option to reschedule it if I want to do so, uh, which is all very handy. Uh, you may also notice here that I have the possibility to add invitees um, to this meeting, which is a change for uh, any of you who use the platform before. You can now have multi-person meetings on the platform, so that's really handy. So um, I could invite anyone else to this meeting too. So I could, um, I could add, add Joe from the call um, to this meeting as well and say, yeah, Robin, Ricardo, um, hi there, would be great to meet. I can sort of change that meeting there and it's instantly turned into a multi-user meeting. So um, very, very simple. All you need to do is get onto their profile, go into the request a meeting section on the right-hand side, simply type in a name, find a time um, and send an invite. Um, really simple to do. And, and this is what the platform is all about is facilitating those meetings. Um, so that's, that's something that's, that's really handy. Um, I think what I'll possibly show you next is uh, some of the actual little features that we have on the platform. So uh, what I couldn't show you on uh, Facilitate Platform for the moment uh, is some of the actual features of Teams. So um, the way to think about Teams, if you haven't used the platform before, is essentially, whereas what I've been doing up till now has been mostly um, in terms of sending the meeting to recover, as being on an individual basis, Teams allows you to send meetings in a much more collaborative way, but also perform actions in a much more collaborative, company-wide, organization-wide basis. So here, um, we've got the, the Glissa Exhibitor profile page. Um, they've also embedded a URL. I've got more information about the page here. I can see who um, we've got common in terms of uh, connections. I can see their representatives um, who will form part of the Glissa team, and I can also see any products that they've got all very handy information. Um, what's slightly different though on the Glitter page is let's say that I don't know specifically who I want to meet with from Glitter or um, I want to, I just go onto the Glitter page and say that really interesting, let me schedule a meeting with someone rather than um, sort of having to find the specific profile for someone who works at Glitter. Um, you will notice down here, there's a drop down list next to Glitter representative. 
in this list is um, the names of or the is a sort of a list of names of all the people who work for Glisser who are part of the Glisser team at the event. So rather than Jordan, I might decide instead that I'd rather meet with Matthew. Um, so it comes up here that I request a meeting, um, but I can also, uh, which is very handy because I'm part of the group team up here, as I showed you before, I can pick a list of any one of the people uh, on this list to go to that meeting instead. So I can pick uh, Sol perhaps to go to that meeting instead. Um, and in exactly the same way as before, uh, I can sort of change the date, time, um, find a location, add a personal message. Uh, but I can also add uh, invitees from the beginning. So I can simply search for a different colleague instead um, uh, and add them that way. So I can add a multi-person meeting from the off. Uh, obviously, bear in mind that if you sort of use Teams to do this, you, you, you're acting on their behalf. So um, just bear that in mind so that they'll get a request from you know, the person you're acting on behalf of, not, not you. But uh, yeah, it's very, very handy, especially if you know that someone in your team will want to speak with someone um, from a specific company, uh, not yourself. You know someone else is better placed. So really handy tool. Some of you will have noticed as well that there's been a little number um, in terms of the, the meeting request you have left until the pending meeting limit. Um, essentially all that is, is a, a sort of a cap that's put in place uh, to stop lots of sort of spam like meeting requests being sent out when everyone logs onto the platform for the first time. So um, in your event, the, the meeting request limit is higher, um, but essentially in, in group virtual here, it's 10 meeting requests you can have pending at any one time. Um, so, all that means is you can have 10 meetings that are pending. Uh, so that means not accepted, not declined, not canceled at any one time. So you can send 10 meeting requests out. Uh, and as long as someone accepts, declines, or you cancel the meeting request yourself, you get another sort of, I guess, token back to send out another meeting request. Um, so it just means that you've got to be slightly more diligent about who you send your meeting request to and uh, put a little bit more time into to making sure that they're, they're personalized and that person will, will want to accept the meeting request that you're sending. So bear that in mind, it doesn't so cap your total number of meetings at the platform at all, it's just how many you can have at any one time. Cool. So that's sort of sending meeting requests, um, both on an individual level and as part of the team. Um, I've shown you sort of a bit of the team's functionality before, but I'm gonna show you a bit more now. So we sort of addressed um, dealing with your team members, company profile, uh, your product account, and uh, so on in the last um, in the sort of the, the, um, the facilitate platform but here I'm going to show you a couple more options at the top so we have meetings and that basically gives an overview of all the different meetings that people on my team are having over a given period again excuse the German I've been doing some testing on the platform uh, for, for that so don't worry about that there um, but I can see who is having meetings at different times um, so I can keep track of all of my team's activity on the platform. If I head to inbound lead, um, I'm going to see another really powerful feature of the platform. So um, <laughs> my internet is so dire at the moment, I apologize. Um, so we get basically a list of all the people who've interacted in some capacity with uh, the group team on the platform. So that can come in a number of ways. It can either be that they've shown interest in uh, one of your products, in your company profile itself maybe, or one of your team members, that they formed a connection with one of your team members, um, or they viewed a, a session that you've sponsored maybe. There's a number of different ways uh, that, that people can come into your inbound leads. Um, bear in mind that this, this list is sort of on an individual basis. So. Although the 864 total leads are common to, to all you know, the entire GRIP exhibitor profile, um, this view here of to review and reviewed is for me to go through. So um, 818 is an exceptionally high amount because it's our demo platform, but um, it essentially allows me to go through this list and decide whether I want to sort of move further in terms of interacting with this user. So um, I can see here, George. Uh, George has a meeting with uh, uh, Tim, the CEO, and uh, a couple of other team members. So. Katie as well, and has also viewed a couple of profiles of different people on the platform, as well as a company profile. Um, if we had more products on there, it would also have a tag. Um, so let's say they were particularly interested in stream providers. Um, I could see that, and I might say to one of my colleagues who's a sort of stream provider um, connoisseur, I could say to him, 
you know, I've got George Wilman in the uh, lead list, have you sort of schedule a meeting with him and he could go from there and, and request a meeting. So it's really useful, powerful tool for you to kind of keep on top of all the people who are coming into your company's inbound leads at the course of the event. Um, from, this, from this list, I can sort of show interest and skip in the same way as before. Uh, and when I do so, um, these people will then move from my to review list into my review list. Um, so they'll, they'll fall in there as well. And there's Kim <laughs> on the platform as well. Um, I also have company chat. So when messages are sent through to the GRIP profiles and not necessarily to yourself, but when they're sent through to the GRIP um, profile page, these messages will come into the company chat box and everyone who's part of that team has access to the company chat box and can reply to messages. So there might be um, when you have slightly more company generic questions that are being sent through, you can just have someone who sits and you know, periodically checks the company chat and just make sure that um, information is supplied to the representatives when they ask for it. So really handy functionality uh, to, to make the most of as an exhibitor too. Uh, and then finally, we have the contact section. So this is when people have not just sort of showed a soft interest either by viewing a, viewing one of your profiles, by viewing a product profile or so on, but when they've actually formed a connection or schedule a meeting with any one of your team members. Um, and you can filter these by um, whether they've had a meeting with someone, um, or whether they've just connected with someone, uh, by which team member. Um, so it's a really handy list to have here and you can take more actions on them and, and sort of see more information about how they've come in as a contact to uh, this list. So very handy. The only other thing I'm gonna show you quickly within the Teams functionality is the export section. So um, there are two main export options uh, for, um, for, teams on, uh, for Teams on the platform. So you have ex export meetings and export contacts. So both of these will generate CSV files. Export meetings will generate a CSV file of all your team's accepted meetings at Grip Virtual. It's a really strong place to start your sort of post-event uh, review of the sort of interactions that your team members had, um, sort of building on those leads uh, and making sure you have a record of those people that you met. You also have an export contacts option down here um, where you simply click to generate a CSV and you have the option to download it. Um, of all those contacts that we saw in this list here. So again, very handy, of course, due to GDPR, there will be no email or phone number shared in this um, export. So do make sure that you collect those in the course of your meetings and also in the chat when you're interacting with those different users on the platform. So I've shown you a little bit more and I appreciate there's a lot taken in one go. Um, it's probably best for you to, to kind of get onto the platform yourself and start to play around with different parts of the both the individual sort of capacities and just sending meeting requests and setting up your own profile, but also having a dig around in the team section just to explore some of the features here. And obviously as more people interact, um, you'll see uh, particularly the inbound leads, company chat and, and contact sections coming to life a bit more. Um, really powerful tools to make the most of. So I think that more or less um, wraps up what you're going to need to sort of pay attention to as uh, a sponsor at um, facilitate, um, particularly in terms of logging on, setting up your own profile and, and kind of managing your team's activity through the team's functionality. There are just a couple more things that, because um, I realize we've got a bit of time that we can, we can dip into. Um, so obviously, uh, facilitate is not just about the networking, it's about the content as well. Um, we haven't got it currently enabled here, although as Kim said, we've got the full agenda coming soon on the platform. You can kind of have a little dig around. Um, but I just want to show you how um, the sort of, how the meetings um, how the sessions uh, play out in terms of your event agenda and schedule. So you see here on the group virtual platform, we have the event agenda. At the top, we have three different filters. I can filter events by date, um, by track or by location. Uh, date is very simple. Um, obviously only gonna be for, for a date. Location, also very simple. Um, it's sort of, uh, I mean, in a virtual event, it is a kind of slightly abstract thing, but it's a, just a, imagine the place. The track is perhaps the only one that you have more questions about. And essentially that's a way of classifying the different talks that you have um, at the event. Um, so on GRIP, we have um, sort of multiple locations, but also we classify the sessions that we're, that we're having on the platform. 
um, by whether they're roundtables or firesides or yeah, it can be either sort of the content area it's related to or the, the, the format that that session is going to take. So worth digging around through tracks just to see if there's sort of any exciting uh, format or session formats that, you, that you've missed. Um, and you can simply apply these and find the, the appropriate sessions. In terms of adding these sessions to your schedule, there's a very quick way to do it, which is simply just to um, kind of hover over on the right hand side, find this calendar looking icon and hit add to schedule. Um, so that will kind of add it straight to my schedule. And you see here, that's been added to my schedule simply by adding this little button. I have the option to watch the live stream. Um, obviously, it's a little dummy because this is a demo environment, but all I would simply do is click through watch live stream, which is very simple indeed. I also have the option to go into the um, into the wave demo session um, or into any any session here, click into them, uh, and there'll be another button underneath where I can add to schedule here. Um, so yeah, you can find out some more information about the time that's taking place on. Um, you can find the sort of location, what type of session it is, and uh, if there's been any sort of exhibitors or speakers attached to it, you'll be able to find more information about those um, on the session page here too. So as I said, I've been looking at an event agenda for things that I might want to, if we're set for sessions and content that I might want to sort of participate in or watch over the course of the event. Um, and I can go to my schedule on the, the left-hand side here to sort of find that um, all of our session and all of those meetings um, that I've added. So not just um, the, the sort of sessions we've been working on, uh, but also those meetings I requested earlier are also showing up here, which is fantastic. So you can see whether the meetings have had their, um, have been responded to or not. Um, and also very importantly, you kind of find the gateway into these meetings too. So um, as I showed you before, you can request meetings very simply on the platform. When you've sent those meeting requests, they will fall into my schedule. And when it comes around to the time, so this one, I believe Thursday, if my, <laughs> if my German's okay, at 10, um, five minutes beforehand, I just need to hover over this little button and this will turn a slightly different color and I can click through into it and it will bring a meeting room up within the platform itself. So no need to download any other software. It will see, simply take me through to a page um, within here uh, that will open up a meeting room for me. So um, very simple. I always have the option to reschedule and cancel. So. Um, Lots of possibilities in here too. So to recap briefly, uh, so if I want to go and find content, it's in the event agenda, but I want to add it to uh, add it to my schedule and it will collate not just sessions, but it'll also add um, sort of the meetings to this area as well. So it sort of um, synthesizes all of the information about your actions and what you're planning on the platform. I guess very lastly, perhaps for the moment, before we open up to any, any more questions, um, I just want to talk about one of the sessions we're planning to run later on in the week. Um, so we're going to have some speed networking sessions later on in the week. Um, these act in terms of adding to your schedule, almost exactly the same to, to anything else. Um, you can sort of add here on the, the right hand side, there'll be a little calendar section or I can go into the, the session itself and add it to my schedule. Now, again, because it's a demo environment, I can't entirely show you what's going on with this. Um, but here I have the option to um, sort of see more information about the session itself. Um, someone look at the Let me see if I can, I can't mute Joe. I hope he hears that. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, the, the, the wave session. Essentially, it's a speed networking session. So in advance, I add the session to my schedule. What it does is it adds it to, uh, adds your name to a list of people who are interested in participating in a speed networking session, and then generates a schedule of meetings that are gonna take place within the wave is what we call it. Um, so when you sort of uh, come onto the platform, you find the session, um, add it to your schedule, and then underneath the session, I've come out into one of our help, uh, sort of help pages here. It'll give you a list of all the other people who are participating in the event and we're in that particular session. And you can show interest in them or skip them. Um, eventually, we use a meeting uh, sort of generator uh, to sort of generate an agenda for you uh, for that particular session. So um, here, you'll be able to see, uh, and so we've got open meeting room here, and that would sit essentially here. Um, you got sort of details about your waves, so the different people you'll be meeting with and the times you'll be meeting them at too. There's also the big purple button, open meeting room, which might be a slightly different color, but um, you open that meeting room 
uh, and you have a series of meetings, one after the other, without the need to sort of jump out of the platform. So it will go one to the next to the next. Um, and it's a really, really interesting way of putting people together. We've seen a lot of events do it. Um, and in terms of sort of, uh, we call it the sort of the water cooler moment, being able to put people together and um, talk about something uh, that you've got in common without sort of any of that friction beforehand. It's a really useful functionality. So if you see the speed networking session, would 100% recommend adding it to your schedule and uh, and enjoying the results of it. Um, so I think um, that probably wraps things up in terms of a brief overview. Um, in short, and I think the most important thing for you guys this week is to log into your into the the, the, the facilitate platform Go into your profile and make sure everything checks out there. Preview it, manage your availability. Then go into a team's profile. Make sure your team members check out okay. Your company profile looks okay. And add as many products as you feel necessary. Uh, and just make sure everything looks slick before we sort of do the full launch next Tuesday when you get to sort of participate in the meetings, networking, and session side of the event. Um, so I think the moment that probably wraps things up um i hope there's not a mountain of questions in the the chat box below um i'll open up to, to joe or kim if, if there's anything i need to, to to pick up on um i think all good from from my side Callum, i'm just getting back to to people in the chat um could you actually run through how to um how to embed a video again please on your on your sure. profile that'd be great yeah no worries Sure thing. So it will depend a little bit on um, where you're getting the video from. The ones we most commonly see are YouTube and Vimeo, ever so slightly different. But basically, what you need to do is you can't go into um, YouTube, find the video, and then go into the URL at the top um, because that won't embed the video. It will give you a link to the video that you can click out of the platform to. Um, you need to find the embed code. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, let me go into company profile. Let me go to video URL. There is a, uh, a guide um, here for learn, learn how. It can show some more detailed instructions. But just to show you again quickly, uh, if you go into the, the video, underneath the video, there's a share button and it gives you a number of options. You can either um, share it for Facebook, Twitter, email, Reddit, um, or a shortened link, but you can also embed the video. So if you click embed, it will give you quite a lot of code. You don't need all of it. All you need is basically between the two inverted commas here. Uh, so HTTPS all the way to, we've got zero, zero at the end there. Um, the easiest way for me to do this on my computer is simply just to hit Command C and it will copy this little um, nugget of the, of the URL here. This is a really important bit. You can see it says youtube.com slash embed and then sort of 10 or so characters. That's the bit that really matters. I don't need any of the rest of it. So I just copy that, go back to company profile. Um, I will delete this one. Uh, and simply just copy and paste that in. Hit add, hit update. And it, it should be there. You can go and double check this straight away. And as I said, there is a, a quick guide for it there. Um, Vimeo probably, I think Vimeo acts in a very similar way as well. Um, you'll be able to find an embed code very simply. So you just need to start HTTPS um, and then there should be uh, www.youtube.com slash embed slash eight or nine characters. That's the only bit you need. You don't need the rest of the, uh, the HTML code that goes with it. Um, I hope that clarifies things a little bit. Okay. Um, Joe, is there anything else that anyone's asking to, to see in the in the chat? I think um, I'm up to date, although um, please let me know if I'm not, guys. And, and of course, um, feel free to, to speak up um, and we can run through anything else again. I've got a question actually from Jodie. Um, just will they go over where the actual meetings are held? So I guess the, I presume the video, do you mean the video um, function, Jodie? I'm not sure. Yeah. So it's like here. So yeah, yeah, I presume you mean sort of the the um, one to one or sort of one to many meetings that we sort of so, talked yeah. about organising at the start. Yeah, sure. So um, I sent all those 
uh, requests on, on different people's profiles and they're all collated here in my schedule. So um, if I've sent a meeting request out, I should be able to find it in my schedule. So here we will see I've got um, a couple of sessions that I've added and then I've also got a couple of meetings here. So in this block here, I've got the time, um, different participants and the company they're from, also the meeting location, which is kind of less important for this event, but also crucially it says virtual meeting right next to it. You compare this first one at 10 a.m. to the one at 4.45, I can see that uh, the one at 4.45 has not yet been responded to. So it's still awaiting response. I can still reschedule and cancel it. In terms of actually having that meeting, all I will need to do is wait until five minutes before the meeting starts and I can hit uh, virtual meeting. And basically when I click through to here, uh, in the sort of space that's occupied, um, I guess from this top left-hand corner, down to the right-hand corner, um, there'll be a meeting room. And it acts in a kind of very similar way to Google Meets, Zoom, um, Cisco, any of those different systems that you use, it'll be sort of embedded within here. And all you'll need to do um, is sort of, there'll be a, a, an option to turn your camera on and you'll be in the meeting room. So it really is as simple as going to my schedule and then five minutes before that meeting starts, hitting the virtual meeting button, and you do well not to get into the meeting room. It, it, it'll be there for you. So that's, um, it, it's a very simple process. Um, I'll see if we can find a little support article to drop into the chat as well. Um, Pam, is there a no limit to the actual things. meetings? I presume um, Jody means how many people can join them. I, obviously in the, in the first ATC, um, Mm -hmm. We were only able to have one-on-one, -on -one, but now we can have group meetings, can't we? So is there a maximum sure. for groups in the meeting? So in terms of uh, group meetings and the number of people you can have in them at any one time, you can have up to 50 people in a multi-user meeting at any one time. Um, so you can either have a one-on-one -on -one or like I said, one to 50. The thing to bear in mind is that you can only add, uh, and let me go back onto Joe's profile again, just to show you what I mean exactly. But you can essentially only invite 10 people at any one time because we've got to um, account for the, the meeting availability function too. So um, if I go to meeting with Joe, I can request a new meeting. Um, and basically in this box here, I'll only be able to add 10 initially um, into this box here in terms of number of invitees. However, on an existing meeting, let's say this one here, um, I can keep adding members um, to this up to a limit of 50. So I can get up to 15 uh, members in a, in a multi-user meeting on the platform. Um, I can either add 10 at a go um, in this first uh, invitee section, or I can add them to existing meetings using the add invitee function down here. Um, and then another um, question, sorry, to me privately was about um, time no limit. I think we set a time limit of 30 minutes per meeting, didn't we, on, on our system? So it's 30 minutes yeah. per meeting, yeah. if I remember. Yeah, 100% sure of that, but I'm 99.999 I'm sure that that's what yeah. we made the decision yeah. for it to be 30 minutes. Yeah. I think if, yeah. if I remember rightly from the last time, you don't get kicked out of the meeting link if you overrun the 30 minutes. However, um, yeah. you um, you can't join the, rejoin that meeting link after that allotted 30 minute time. That That's right, isn't it guys? Yeah, that's exactly how that works. Yeah, so you've got to you've got to join the meeting five minutes, or you, know, you can join the meeting from five minutes before. Um, you can't join it after the end time, but if you're still in the meeting room, you won't be kicked out of it. Um, and any time that you're so kind of between the allotted time period, you can come in and out at any point. But obviously, at the end time, you can't join it again. So um, you've got a fair bit of flexibility with that in terms of once you're in. If that meeting needs to be an hour long. Don't worry about it. It will. It, you, if you stay in that room. It will, it will remain uh, being an hour long. I think just one thing to note on that is if you've got another 30 minutes back to back with that, of course, just be aware that you don't miss your, your next meeting. Are there any other questions? I think, I think I've think i gone through as well, Joe, and I think we've answered everything in there. Um, but if there's any other questions, feel free to, to ask them now. Just one thing I'd like to, to revisit, if you could just quickly um, revisit this, Callum, is some feedback from the first meet, from our meeting in September was once um, our users got to grips with the chat function, it really helped to, to clarify and qualify the meetings before placing them into the calendar. So obviously what we want to do is have as many qualified and, and effective meetings as possible rather than 
going, you know, having a 30 minute meeting to find out 15 minutes into it that maybe it wasn't one that should have been added in the calendar. If we can utilize and encourage people to use the chat function, to have a bit of a, have a bit of instant messaging back and forward before placing that meeting into the calendar, the, the end result is going to be a lot more um, efficient use of time. So if you could just get, re get, go over the handshake and then how to initiate that chat function, that would be excellent. Yeah, no worries. So um, as you saw before, not that many people were interested in me. We did have Suji, who I sort of showed interest back in and kind of came up with the connect, um, sort of handshake. Um, and then we'll move into my connection. So here is the list of people who you kind of on a, on a softer level, I guess, connected with. So you've both shown a level of interest in each other. That means you're able to chat uh, to that user. Um, and I apologize, I don't know any name, but as you very helpfully pointed out, it's really helpful to get that. Um, it can be very helpful to get that sort of first bit of communication um, to, to, to start making a decent connection here. So I'm going to pick someone here who I've not messaged before. Um, George, for instance, it says I'm now connected. It means I haven't sent a message. Very simple. Um, I can either through the uh, my connections bar, um, can I click chat here and it'll bring up a little chat bar down um, yeah. down here. I've sort of got the Zoom thing in the way, so I can't quite just come over it. And there we are. Uh, but I can type a message in down there. I can also request a meeting. Um, any kind of conversation that I have will be stored in the connections bar on the right hand side. Um, and that's a, another uh, way in which I can bring up that chat bar. So I can simply click um, on George's name down here. Um, but also the other way that I can do it is if I click into George's profile. Um, in sort of front and center, um, I get the, the chat option. And again, it will bring up that bar down the side. So um, very simple. You've got kind of multiple avenues in terms of opening up that conversation before you go to schedule a meeting and, and get that into your calendar. In terms of sending the messages um, in and of itself, um, very simple, as you use on Facebook or LinkedIn. Um, George would be great to chat. And then I can simply hit enter and that message will send. So. Um, very easy to send messages and in the same way that it works on many other messaging platforms, you have uh, the message come right to the top here, um, front and center for you. So just to recap those very briefly, the sort of connections that you make will be stored in your My Connections list. You can chat to any of those connections at any time, um, but also those connections will be stored in the right-hand connections bar. You can send, uh, or you can open up the conversations that way, or you can go into their profiles um, and hit the big chat button there once you form that connection. Um, so yeah, very, very easy to do so. Um, anything else, guys? There is just something quickly from, from my side. I think um, if at all possible, guys, if you can use an up-to-date version of Google Chrome, um, it's, the, it's the best browser for, uh, for using, using this platform. However, all other browsers um, do work as long as they're kind of up to date um, and kind of mainstream. Um, I think uh, the other thing to note is if it's your first time using this platform and and having virtual meetings on it, uh, you may be asked to um, to kind of approve the system. Um, so you'll just need to essentially, if you're using Google Chrome or similar, a pop up will appear in the top left hand corner and you just allow the use of your camera and microphone. Um, but it's a, it's a very simple process. It, it usually just pops up for you. Um, but yeah, I think that's it from, from my end, unless there's any other questions. Sounds sound like we had a, a question from a, a younger younger listener to the webinar today. <laughs> Great, thank you, Callum. Is there anything else from you? Um, thank you both for, for going through that platform. Look, if you have any further questions as you set up um, your platform, then obviously your account managers are on hand um, and you can go to them directly to um, get some expert guidance as well from, from those guys. So look, just um, as you're setting up the platform, just let us know if there's anywhere else we can help you and we're always happy to. Um, that's it, I think. Perfect. Yeah, just, just, much, uh, just um, from our point, just guys, when setting up, if you do need that support, just just drop us a line. We just jump on a Zoom link and we'll do a screen share and make sure we get everything organized for you before we go live. Absolutely.
Great. Thanks, everyone. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.